Unit 5A Moodle Quiz Number 1 Sample Problems. Number 4. This cartoon illustrates a constant pressure process. When we're told that we're at constant pressure, we should know that the delta H will equal Q. Where a sample of gaseous argon is initially at a temperature that's different from the surroundings. The system is in thermal contact with the surroundings and eventually equilibrium between the system and the surroundings is established. Look at the initial and final states of the system and deduce the signs of work of the heat and work. The only work that occurs is expansion and compression. So first of all you can look at the magnitude of the arrows coming off the particles and that would indicate a large amount of energy so heat um, but on the final stage you can see the magnitude of the arrows have all gotten quite a bit smaller so this system must have cooled down in order to reach this state here and so in order to cool down heat has to be released and therefore this is an exothermic process and so Q is going to be negative it has compressed which means that the surroundings must have done work on the system. The surroundings have pushed the gas inward, and so work has been done on the system of gas, which means work has a positive value. So the answer to this should be Q is less than zero and work is greater than zero, which is letter C. This cartoon shows the initial state of a system. A sample of gaseous argon is in thermal contact with the surroundings. After thermal equilibrium has occurred, it is found that the Q is greater than zero. So that means that heat has been absorbed because Q is positive and work is less than zero. That means work has moved outwards, which makes it negative. So this tells you that it expanded outwards. So you're looking for an answer that has a larger volume. Notice these have pretty much the same volume that has less volume and these have more. So it's down to B or D. Because it absorbed heat energy then the particles must have a greater magnitude of energy and so you want to choose between these two we want to choose D because this has the larger arrows than B does. So D is going to be the correct answer. Number six, look at the diagram for the reaction below. A reaction takes place in two different ways. In each case, the beginning and ending points are the same. Here it tells you that for path number one, Q, plus, Q is plus 15 and W is plus 10. We know that Q plus W equals the delta E. And so if we look at path number one, they're telling you the Q is 15 and they're telling you the W is 10 which we can calculate the delta E as 25. For path number 2 if the delta E for path 1 is 25 then that is also the delta E for path number 2 because that's a state function meaning the ending result is the same for all the paths. Um, however unless we're told Q or W for path number 2 there's really no way to know what they are and so um, we can choose for our answer it says which of the following choices correctly describes the values that must be obtained for path 2 and we know that it can be question mark question mark 25 so C. Number 7 a reaction takes place in three different ways so let's set up a little table where we have Q plus W equals Delta E and we have path number one, path number two, and path number three. Path number one, we're told W is negative 44. Path number two has a Q of negative 75. And path three has a delta E of negative 96. Delta E is a state function, which means that it's going to be the same for all three of these. Meaning, once we get here, we end up with negative 96. And that would be true for all three paths. However, um, we have to actually use this equation to solve for our Q and our W. Here, Q would have to be negative 52 plus negative 44 equals negative 96. 
Here, negative 75 plus negative 21 equals negative 96. And here, we don't know Q or W, and so we are unable to figure out those two values. So for path number 1, should have a negative 52, so that is not true. For path number 1, negative 52, negative 44, but we do know that this is negative 96, so that's not true either. Path number 2, negative 75, negative 21, negative 96, this one is true. Path number 2, we do know the three values. And then path 3, this is true. We don't know these two, but we do know that that's negative 96, which means this one is not true. So these two paths, paths 2 and 3, are correct. In number 9, a system, and I always like to draw a diagram just to kind of visualize the system and the surroundings, underwent a change in state and did 37 joules of work on the surroundings. And so work was done on the surroundings by the system, and so it pushed outward, and so that would be work, make work a negative value. The change in energy of the system was negative 471.0 joules. Calculate heat, so what is Q? And we can use the equation delta E equals Q plus W, where delta E is negative 471.0 equals Q plus, and now we know that this value of work is actually a negative 37.0 since work is negative. And so I'll add 37.0 to both sides of the equation, and I get Q is equal to a negative 434 joules, which is letter A. Number 11, what is the value of delta H? And notice it says at the end here that it's at constant pressure, which tells us that the delta H is equal to Q. So basically it's asking what is the value of Q? where 92.68 kilojoules of work are performed, so 92.68 kilojoules, and here's my visualization, here's the system, here's the surroundings, and work is performed on the system, so work is being done on the system, and so that's going to mean work has a positive value, and we have a delta E of 24.08 kilojoules. So I'll set up my equation delta E equals Q plus W and delta E is 24.08 equals Q plus a positive 92.68. I'll subtract that from both sides of the equation and that gives me a Q of negative 68.6 joules, kilojoules which is letter E. A reaction takes place inside of a container. So the reaction is the system and the container is the surroundings. After the reaction occurs, the pressure inside the container has not changed. So that would tell me that it's at constant pressure, which tells me that delta H is equal to Q. So here, the Q and the delta H have to have the same sign, which lets us know that E can't be a possible answer. The temperature of the container has decreased. So if the temperature of the container, say, were 10 degrees Celsius, and then let's say it drops, decreases to 5 degrees Celsius, then what has to happen to the heat? in order for the temperature to drop. Well, heat has to be removed from the container, which means heat was taken from the container by the system, which tells you that Q is positive in this system. And so we know that Q has to be positive, which means delta H, ha delta H has to be positive, and that eliminates B and C. The volume of the container has increased. So because the volume increased, that means the container expanded, which means it was doing work outward. And that gives us a negative sign for work. And so we would choose letter D. The only way work would be equal to zero is if this container remained at constant volume. 
Number 17, what are the signs of QW and delta H for this endothermic reaction that takes place at constant pressure? So constant pressure tells you that the delta H is going to be equal to the Q. It's endothermic. So here's my system, and then there's the surroundings outside. It's endothermic, so the heat must be going into the system, which is a positive value for Q. And then it tells us that we have three moles of gas before and two moles of gas after. So there's less moles of gas, which tells us that we have a smaller volume, which means work was done inward because there was compression. And so that's going to be a positive value for W. And so we want to choose where Q and delta H are positive as well as W is positive, and so that's going to be letter E. An ice cube at negative 10 degrees Celsius sits on a tabletop at room temperature. So here's my system, which is the ice cube, and the surroundings are, besides the air, going to be the table, and the ice cube is at negative 10 degrees Celsius, and the table's at 25 degrees Celsius, which is roughly room temperature. After thermal equilibrium has occurred, the ice has melted. Ice has a negative charge in volume, change in volume when it melts and warms, which answer choice gives the correct signs. So first of all, heat always moves from hot to cold, and so that's how we know that heat is going into the system, which tells us that Q is positive. We can assume that this is happening at constant pressure um, since it's sitting on a table in the only pressure present here is atmospheric pressure pushing in on the ice. So Q and delta H have positive values. If I wanted to know what delta E is, then I'm going to have to take, find out what is the sign of work. And so the volume is, has a negative, we're told that it has a negative change in volume when the ice melts. And so what I'll actually do is use the equation work equals negative pressure times delta V. And pressure's constant, so we can pretty much ignore that value. And since we have a negative change in volume, then that means this negative times this negative equals a positive, which tells us that the work has a positive value. And so because work has a positive value, the delta E must have a positive value, which makes the answer A. A reaction takes place in a container with a fixed volume, which means at constant volume, and that tells us that the delta E is going to be equal to Q, and that work is equal to zero. So after the reaction occurs, the pressure inside the container has increased, and the temperature of the container has increased. So remember that we have our system, and then the container is going to be the surroundings. And because the temperature, let's say it increased from 5 degrees Celsius and went up to 10 degrees Celsius, well, if the temperature of the container increased, then it must have increased in the amount of heat. And so heat must move to the container to make its temperature rise, which gives us a negative value for Q, and therefore delta E is going to be a negative value. So we know that work is equal to zero, and then we know that both Q and delta E are negative. Number 20, a temperature change of 3 degrees is measured when a sample of calcium is burned in oxygen in a contain, constant volume bomb calorimeter. So constant volume tells us that um, we have work equal to zero, the delta E must be equal to whatever Q is, and basically you have a reaction, the calcium plus the oxygen, and that's going to be our system. And then everything else around it is the bomb calorimeter, which is basically just the container, which is going to be our surroundings. So it's telling us that the container rose up by 3 degrees. So let's say it went from 5 degrees to 8 degrees. Well, if there's a temperature increase in the container, then heat must have moved from the system into container, which makes Q negative from the system. So that means that our delta E is also negative, and so we'll choose letter B. Number 21, what is the sign of delta E for the chemical reaction 
this one, assuming that delta V is equal to zero. Consider the reaction as the system. And so we know that because delta V is equal to zero, then there is work is equal to zero, and therefore delta E is going to equal whatever Q is. But since we have no indication of what Q is, then we cannot determine from the given information this answer. Number 23, what is the sign of delta E for this reaction? Consider the reaction as the system. So here's my reaction. It is the system, and everything else is the surroundings. Delta E is going to be equal to Q plus W, and we are told that the delta H is negative 367.5. We can assume that it's at constant pressure, and so that's going to also be my value for Q, negative 367.5. Um, plus work. Well, we go from having zero moles of gas to one mole of gas. And so we can imagine that the system expanded outwards, which means the system did work on the surroundings when it expanded, which is a negative value for W. And so since W is a negative value, then negative plus a negative means the delta E must be a negative value. And so letter C would be the answer you'd choose. Two separate solutions are made containing HCl and NaOH at 20 degrees. The solutions are mixed at constant pressure, which tells us that the delta H is equal to Q. And the final temperature of the solution is found to be 25 degrees Celsius. So initially, the solution was 20 degrees Celsius, or the water, and then it rose to 25.1 degrees Celsius. So that means that the system the reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide must have given off heat in order for the solution to rise in temperature, which is going to be a negative value for Q, which means delta H is negative. We are told that we have a delta V equal to zero, which tells us work is equal to zero, and delta E is going to have, since work is equal to zero, then that tells us that the delta E is equal to Q, and since Q is negative, then the delta E must also be negative, and so our answer is letter B. A solution is made by dissolving a small amount of KCl into a large container of water. And so we have our system, which started out with KCl, and our surroundings, which is water, and the water is at 20 degrees Celsius. After mixing at, mixing at constant pressure, constant pressure means delta H is going to equal Q, the final temperature of the solution is found to be 15.2 degrees Celsius. That means that the solution cooled down, and so heat must have been removed from it, and therefore we have a Q that's positive, so a positive delta H and a positive Q. It's at constant volume, which means work is equal to zero, which means delta E is also equal to Q, and therefore both of those will be positive, and so we would choose E for our answer.